I will welcome into Tom Sox Conversations. I am Crawford Humphreys. They say in the SEC, it just means more. And that is certainly the case for the SEC talent that has been a part of the Tom Sox roster the past couple of seasons. And Tom Sox faithful will especially remember the pair of Tigers that were a part of the championship run last season. And I'm very honored to have Auburn Tigers assistant coach Carl Nonmaker on today's show. Coach, how are we doing? Man, I'm doing great, Crawford. Thanks for having me. Uh, excited to be here. Now, getting into it, I know that you have some experience with baseball here in the Commonwealth. You worked at ODU before you took the job at Auburn. How did that connect you to the Charlottesville area and particularly to the Tom Sox organization? Yeah, you know, it's actually an interesting story. Um, we had two really good freshman ball players in Vinny Pasquantino and Kyle Battle. Um, and, you know, I, I, I just, you know, I wanted those guys to be, have a great league. And Coach Finwood and I had talked about, you know, where would be a good place for these guys to play. And I'd seen that Charlottesville was relatively new. Obviously, you know, we'd go play at Virginia every year. And, you know, we know that Charlottesville is a great town. But, uh, you know, just the idea of being able to have those guys play in a good league, not too far from the Richmond area uh, where their family and friends are, I thought it might be something um, – you know, that, that would be good for, for everybody. And, you know, for anybody that, you know, has met Vinny, um, you know, he'll, he'll get some people out to the games, you know, because he's got, you know, he's got that personality. So I cold called Jeff Burton, um, you know, Kevin McMullen at, at the university of Virginia is a good friend of mine. And I just, you know, said, Hey, do you have any connections with the Tom Sox? And he gave me Jeff's number and, and really, you know, for a while had to talk him into it a little bit and said, Hey, these guys are special freshmen. I know they haven't, you know, done anything in a in a college season yet, but you know, I think they'd be guys that would be fits. And and thankfully, I think those guys went, and I think you guys did win a championship that that year as well, right? Yeah, Pasquantino is one of one of the legends for this organization. He's something else. You knew he would be. <laughs> now, when you're as a coach and you're looking for summer baseball programs and you're trying to find, you know, what's the best fit. What boxes do you look to check, and why do the Tom Sox make a good fit for some of your guys? Yeah, um, it, you're looking for a place where guys can have a positive experience, right? Like this is their life, right? And um, you you want to treat some guys a little bit individually, right? If it if a kid is from real close to Auburn, we might want to send him real far away from Auburn just to help give him experiences that he wouldn't have. If a kid's from really far away from Auburn you know, we might send him a little bit closer to home or, or something like that. But we're, we're looking for a great experience, um, an opportunity to get better, you know, living in a good town, uh, being taken care of that way. And just, and, and just for them to come back feeling like, you know, they got better, uh, had an uplifting experience, were taken care of, and then obviously came back, you know, in one piece <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 and with a positive mind about it. Now, the Auburn Tigers had a very strong showing on the 2019 Tom Sox roster. I know Carson Skipper and Peyton Glavin were two names that we all looked out for, and they chipped in big time in that championship run. Tell us a little bit about those guys, and did you see any progress uh, from their play in the summer? Yeah, you know, um, you know, we had had a long year, right? So we had talked about, you know, maybe sending some different guys and those guys along the way, and you know, when, when Omaha ended last year, it was late. And, you know, we had some guys that, you know, were out of gas that needed a little time off. Um, you know, and I think, I think that ultimately happened a little bit with Carson, you know, Carson threw some big innings throughout the year for us and went up there and gave it everything he had um, and, and came home and got rested up. And, you know, but those guys were good, you know, uh, Carson made a huge jump this year, you know, his, his velocity was, was 90 91 every day it was probably 87 every day last year he put on 25 pounds you know between when he left you guys and 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 got here so you know that pitching is delicate I was glad he, these guys were able to go up there and help you guys win some games and and get a little bit of that experience of a different state in a different area of the country uh, Carson's from Alabama and Peyton's from Atlanta um, and so I know they enjoyed it and uh, and and they were better they were better for it now, the Tom Sox were supposed to have a wide variety of Auburn Tigers on this year's roster. I think six players total that could fluctuate a couple of outfielders, a couple of pitchers. Uh, tell us a little bit about the talent that we could have seen in Charlottesville this upcoming summer. Yeah, you know, we, we um, 
you know, a lot of times, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll sign a pitcher or two and, and we, we, with a lot of places, will wait till the summer to figure out who could go out there. Right. And who, who, who for us is at that 30 inning mark where they can still go throw another 25 innings and what pitchers didn't throw 75 or 80. You know, we had some, some really good young pitchers on the staff from Trace Bright, who was a Tuesday starter. Um, you know, Mason Barnett, Hayden Mullins, those are guys that were really highly sought after that we talked a lot about. Um, Ryan Dial was a left-handed hitting catcher, a real versatile kid. You know, Ryan ended up missing the season with an injury. Um, and, you know, maybe he picked a good one to miss uh, with it getting cut short. But really good bat. Johnny Sicoli was a power left-handed hitting bat. Um, so we had a, a lot of guys that, you know, we were thinking about trying to figure out who are the three or four that need to play and that are fresh and ready to go help you guys win. Now, coach, as a baseball player yourself and as throughout your career uh, as a coach, how important is summer league baseball, especially to players that are playing in such a competitive environment in the SEC? Yeah, I think for a lot of our guys, um, having an opportunity to get away from their coaches and, and, and just go play is, 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 is really valuable, right? Right now in our setup, the majority of the teams are, are done at the, you know, the end of May and then some teams play into early or mid June. So um, especially for those younger guys that have a chance to go get 150 at bats or, or throw 30 innings and, and get in a new environment. Um, I think all those things are valuable not only to develop, you know, like I said, as a, as a player, but just the experience of getting that culture of seeing a different area of the country and, and getting a good life experience. I think it all helps the development of, of an athlete. Now, did you yourself have any summer league baseball experiences? Yeah. So, um, it was a long time ago, but there were still, you know, a, a good amount of summer leagues when I was there. And, and, you know, my first summer I, I had to, I was far away. I was from New Jersey and I went to college at Vanderbilt. So I, I went to play in the ABCL, which was close to home. And I, I had to get a, a shoulder surgery that summer that I knew I had to get. So I played a few weeks. Um, but after my sophomore and junior year, I, I played for, um, for Chatham, um, you know, in the Cape Cod league and, and went back up there two different summers, had a good experience. Um, and really through coaching, right. Is when I've gotten to see some other places that are, are, are great opportunities for guys that, that they can go and develop and, and have a lot of fun. I know I did. Well, coach, that's about all I've got in terms of questions. Do you have anything you'd like to add just about, you know, the players you got, the Charlottesville Tom Sox organization, anything like that? Yeah. You know, I would just say, you know, we're, we're really thankful for, for the relationship that we have, you know, having a place where guys can, you know, we trust and, you know, you, you know, as a, as a coach, you have to have some different places where you feel like you can send your guys up that are going to be taken care of and and have a positive experience and excited about what you guys have been doing to to create that environment, right? To create an environment, uh, and it's cool that you've created an environment where winning is important because um, there's not a day that we step on the field where winning isn't important. So um, I've really enjoyed it, and you know, always wishing you guys the best. And I know you got a great opportunity for, for a lot of players to have fun and, and become a better ball player. It truly is a special experience. And it's definitely special for all of us to have such high caliber guys playing here, coming from the SEC and ACC and all these Power Five conferences coming into Charlottesville. Well, Coach War Eagle, thank you so much for your time. Uh, this has been Tom Sox Conversations. I'm Crawford Humphreys. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and the Tom Sox TV YouTube page for more Tom Sox Conversations. Thank you all so much. Hey.